So we have, uh, we have one final um, keynote here uh, before this, uh, this opening session breaks up. And, uh, and that's going to be uh, from IBM and from the CTO and general manager for their next generation platforms at IBM, Danny Sabah. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, good morning. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try and uh, spend a little bit of time with you to, to give you a little bit of a perspective on how IBM views OpenStack and how IBM is incorporating OpenStack into its overall directions in its cloud architecture. So we'll spend a little bit of time on that, and then I'm going to ask one of our Chinese partners, so you won't have to wait till tomorrow, <laughs> uh, but basically I'm going to ask one of our Chinese partners to come up and show you how they've been using IBM's implementations around OpenStack to actually start solving real uh, problems in electronic commerce in China around Chinese clouds. So uh, what I'm going to talk about primarily is the massive transfer transformation that our entire industry is undergoing. I mean, the last time that I remember a transformation like this was really, you know, I mean, there have been phases of transformations. I hate to tell you how long I've been in, in, in this industry. But I started as a developer in 1974. That'll give you just a little bit of a hint. It'll also give you a little hint as to how old I am. <laughs> but in any case, um, I've seen quite a number of these phases. And I'm really, really excited by this one. This one, I think, has the potential to change everything. Everything about how we think about computing, about not only what we compute, but how we compute. And I think it's important to understand that when you think back and look from a perspective at the role that OpenStack can play. We're committed to it. We're committed to that particular role because we think that underlying this whole notion of cloud is really the transformation of the internet into a computing engine. And that computing engine is going to unlock all of those things that you saw in the previous chart. However, unlocking that potential, that exciting set of potential applications, is going to require that we rethink exactly how we compute. Much of what we are computing on the internet today requires not only massive computer scale, consumer scale, but, which then leads to computer scale, <laughs> but it also needs to scale in some rather interesting ways. If you think about the way that we've used data centers in the past, we've had transaction systems. Those transaction systems also had to scale but never at the level that we're talking about today, and never with the speed and agility that it's had to actually attack those particular problems like we have today. So when you think about the Internet of Things, when you think about embedded intelligent devices, when you think about things like a connected car, a connected car is both a data center on wheels that basically has to then incorporate huge numbers of different types of applications with security, integrate them, and integrate them in front of a consumer user while running down the road at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. That is one heck of a challenge. And those applications have to come online, and those applications have to react to that scale instantly and effectively. So scale up, scale down, scale fast. Not only that, 
But basically, we have to look at that scale as an outgrowth of what we do on the internet, not in any specific or isolated data center. So when you hear me talk about software defined, which is in large part what we're trying to do with OpenStack, software defined to me means that the computing engine is the internet, not any given specific data center, not any specific silo or individual application. However, within that particular context, it is extremely important for us to realize that those particular applications are built at the time to solve a specific problem. Therefore, they are by nature going to be heterogeneous. They are by nature not going to live in any single cloud, single environment, single hardware or software environment. Therefore, they will have to be heterogeneous. They will have to integrate on the fly. They will have to interoperate. And hopefully, eventually, they will have to become portable. So one of the biggest reasons why we felt that OpenStack was so important to our own strategy going forward as a business was because one of the key goals, as you've heard this morning time and again, around OpenStack is to provide that kind of open community where everyone can come together and lend their intellectual property and their value to create open standards that allow us to just start considering managing that kind of environment for interoperability, for openness, and eventually, hopefully, for some degree of portability. Now, we're not new to this particular world. As a matter of fact, I was just telling Jonathan that I remember when we made the decision to go Apache in 1994. Commercial organization like IBM making a decision to go Apache in 1994. Subsequently, we've been involved in Eclipse, we've been involved in Linux, we've been involved in linking link data strategies in OSLC, we've been involved in creating communities of many different types, and OpenStack is just the latest in a long series of initiatives that we've tried to promote around this whole notion of creating communities that then establish standards. It is extremely important for us as a core tenet of our overall strategy as a corporation. It's the only thing that's going to work. It's the only thing that's going to allow us to then tackle the types of problems that we're talking about, whether it's around integration of ecosystems so that those solutions for that connected car that we just alluded to basically start to come together. That's just one of many, many, many examples that we think will provide tremendous opportunity if we manage to focus on those issues of interoperability, openness, and portability. Not only do we need to solve those particular issues as a community, but we need to do it in a way that then allows people to rapidly experiment. Because one of the key elements of social, mobile, analytics around cloud is the fact that people are running massive experiments. They don't necessarily know what the answer is. What they do know is that there may be an answer. So one of the reasons why people focus on understanding that scale up and scale down and rapid provisioning as well as rapid deployments is because there's a lot of noise in that data and they're trying to find solutions through that particular noise and start to generate signal. 
So, speaking of building out solutions, essentially, one of the ways that we tend to think of it, basically, is OpenStack not so much as a virtualization layer, but more as an abstraction layer. If you want to use virtualization and virtualize resources underneath OpenStack using KVM or any of the number of hypervisors that are out there, more power to you. But one of the things that you know, I've tried to drive in IBM is leveraging and understanding OpenStack as an abstraction layer that can actually map to physical resources when you need it to. Why? Because of that rapid deployment and performance set of issues that Mark was talking about. So if you take a look at what we've learned in core computer science over I don't know how many years, starting with understanding the performance of applications in optimizing compilers, understanding how to map them dynamically into varying architectures, the reason we've been able to do that is because of the emergence of all kinds of pattern analysis techniques that understand applications, understand resources, and know how to match them up, and know how to build optimized solutions. And so a large part of what we're doing with OpenStack is not only contributing to the community, but trying to understand how performance patterns for classic and new algorithms can actually be optimized for both performance and rapid deployment in portable open clouds. So what I'm going to do is bring up Paul Liu. He's the CEO of Wuxi Lake Cloud, and he's going to show you how some of those experiments working with IBM have led us to start deploying OpenStack in real environments around e-commerce. Paul? Thank you, Danny. I'm Paul Lu uh, from Lake Cloud. A, a little bit about our company. Uh, our company is located in the city of the Wuxi, uh, which is nearby Shanghai. It uh, has the largest uh, freshwater lake called the Great Lake. So that's our company uh, name comes from. Uh, we are actually the first uh, commercial cloud service provider in China from 2008. Our business now focuses on an e-commerce retailer. So uh, our solution is not only a total solution, we are a service based on cloud. On the top of the solution is IBM a software, uh, smart commerce. We are talking about WebSphere commerce, uh, Sterling commerce, uh, iLog, all these uh, commercial software, which uh, retailer brands definitely need. Uh, we are the largest system integrate for IBM Smart Commerce in China. We have to integrate all these uh, platforms together. And on the, uh, once we, uh, the website go to the online, we provide a cloud-based infrastructure for our service. So we are a, a, a total a turnkey a, a service provider. A, I think uh, uh, the one of the biggest challenges is uh, how do we do a uh, integrate all this together? You know, you, when you are talking about e-commerce, you're talking about a lot of uh, uh, third-party uh, marketplace, uh, social networking, uh, a lot of internal uh, legacy, a uh, IT system, ERP, accounting. How can you integrate them together and put them, them into the cloud? Well, one of the example is uh, just uh, I wear two uh, T-shirt now, and uh, the the T-shirt uh, inside is my uh, favorite T-shirt, which fits my uh, body very well, and uh, that's a commercial one, you know, possible a uh, open source one, but that's my legacy come from, 
in order for us to communicate with you and in a, a open environment, I have the uh, uh, OpenStack T-shirt on the top of this resource already there. Why? Because I want to talk to you easy. I want to talk to you quickly. And I talk to thousands of people here very easily. So that's why we choose the OpenStack. Open standard, open source. And we choose the commercial software which work, support the OpenStack. That's the one challenge. We are choosing an open stack. We are choosing IBM, a smart cloud orchestra for our business. They're not absolutely good, absolutely bad for a commercial software or a uh, open source software. It's just a blend of the uh, combination of this soft software for our business. And uh, this is coming, one of the, our business uh, foundation is uh, a cloud infrastructure. It's a public cloud, but it's engineer for the e-commerce. When we're talking about the e-commerce, there are a lot of things. Uh, uh, Danny already mentioned the scale big. Uh, e-commerce is really big. Uh, in China, we do a, like a miao sa. It's like promotion within seconds, you know, for a particular item. Uh, we are talking about the battery day, which is uh, November 11. So they invented by a Timor, the third largest marketplace in China. That's the next Monday. Uh, the sales is expected to hit 30 billion RMB for that particular day. It's far more a, uh, bigger than uh, Black Friday in US. So how, how can we do that? It has to be a cloud. It has to be a LCD for our business. It has to be open. We can pour all these uh, resources available in our society to our business. E-commerce, e the nature of e-commerce e is also a, uh, evolve very quickly. I, in a traditional a software development, uh, deployment, release, it takes months, weeks at least. But now, with an open stack, with an uh, automation tool, we can deploy the software within uh, days, even within uh, hours. Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, a, a scale very quickly. So you have to, uh, a way to do an open standard automation. That's all needed for our business. Not only so, we have to scale bigger. We have to scale a quickly in a heterogeneous environment. We also have to scale very affordably, unfortunately. Uh, so a, uh, uh, the traditional software licensing module works good for the enterprise, but I don't think it works for a service provider because we provide hundreds and hundreds of service to the thousands of enterprise. So that's a... Uh, that's the challenge we are facing now. All these come together. We have to uh, choose an open standard, open source. A, uh, we have to choose a, the commercial software which already serve our customer. We have to come them together to make sure all these technology work together for our business. Next, I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, a typical a smart commerce involves a uh, tier three uh, architecture. You will see a uh, three layer, uh, four servers, one a web server, two app server, one data, uh, database. database server. Uh, we can show you how we are provisioning, deploy the software uh, within one hour. We are talking about minutes, not hours. We, all, we can also see in the orchestra, we have to uh, standardize uh, the business pattern into an uh, IT pattern, uh, how to do uh, automation, how to do a uh, deployment. Uh, we can also see a, uh, a lot of things uh, in our, in our uh, platform to uh, automate uh, the whole business process as well as the IT process. Uh, so next, I'm going to show the demo. So this is a, a, a B2C website. 
a first small and middle-sized uh, company to open a B2C store. Once you log in, you will see a uh, different task. You choose the task you want. You will see self-service menu. You can see the e-commerce menu, which is pre-engineered. It's a template. So we can deploy. We can choose uh, the pattern. Here you can do the provisioning. You do a uh, when it will be deployed. Who, will, who is going to deploy it, all this password, all this configuration. In a very uh, user-friendly gra graphic user interface. So once you did a request, we have a, a internal a, uh, a procedure to make sure it's get approved. So you go to a uh, contract management, uh, production management, operation management. Once it's approved, it's deployed, you can uh, go there to check whether the instance is there in the graphic user interface. You can also do a uh, OpenStack command, command line. So that's the console to check whether the instance is there. So here is the first server. You can even check each uh, server instance uh, in the graphical user interface or in the command line. So you can see the database instance and the check. I think you can also do the OpenStack uh, console by command line. The, the reason we can do a, uh, a so quick uh, deployment configuration because there is a template. I'm, uh, we are going to see the template a little bit. That's the de after deployed, you know, the website is there. So we're going to see the template, how the template is configured. If business change, you can reconfigure the template, and you can do the uh, de provision and deployment again to make sure your a, a template uh, reflects the changes in your business. Here you go. This is a. Uh, Website, uh, we are already ready for business. I probably tomorrow I'm going to post uh, my OpenStack t shirt there to see what's uh, popular there, how much popular there. Uh, thank you. Get back to Danny. Thank you very much, Paul. I thought it would be useful to actually show you that this is more than just charts that actually we've been working with Paul and his team for quite some time as well as with many others on literally taking OpenStack and starting to implement it at every single layer uh, in our cloud infrastructure around our hardware business, around our services business. And yes, basically, if you start to look at what we're doing in December, not only around the infrastructure side, but also on the past side. As Mark was saying, basically, we already started to work with Pivotal on Cloud Foundry about six or seven months ago, because we found that it was extremely useful in the context of cloudfoundry.org, working through all of the issues with Pivotal on making sure that we do the same thing at the past layer that we were starting to do around infrastructure with OpenStack. So before I leave, I wanted to make sure that I got a chance to congratulate the entire community for the extremely rapid progress that the communities come together on some very tough issues. These are not easy things to solve. What we're actually trying to do 
is start to deploy applications and start to deploy data, data flow, data integration, application integration, not in a data center, but literally on the internet, using internet-based standards. That's not an easy thing to do. It will take us years, but I have a lot of confidence in all the folks in this room. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made the decision to go in this particular direction. We not only want to congratulate you, but we want to do more than congratulate you. We want to make sure that we contribute our share. So our ramp up has been extremely fast in the last year to the point now where we have close to 400 people directly working on one aspect of OpenStack inside of IBM or another. And we've ramped our contributions and our committers commensurate with the size of the problem. And you won't see a stop. This is only the beginning. We are very serious across every single one of our businesses in following this particular direction. And you'll see us not only work through OpenStack, but to try as much as we possibly can to build many communities because there are multiple problems to solve here. Problems to solve at every single one of the layers to really create an open architecture for that interoperability and integration that will be absolutely necessary to succeed in this particular new world and in this transformation that we're all going through. So we are working at every single level to build a dynamic environment that we think will be necessary. Dynamic in the sense that it has to create marketplaces, it has to create ecosystems. Those ecosystems have to come together. It's not about a single provider. It's not about a single software-based data center. It's about the internet and making sure that we create the right sets of open communities, open standards, and marketplaces around that API economy that will allow us to very quickly scale up, scale down, and create new opportunities and tap into the radical evolution that we're starting to see in our everyday lives. So with that, I want to thank you and uh, I also want to invite you to join us uh, and see some of what we've been doing. And by the way, you can see Cloud Foundry on OpenStack already if you go to the IBM booth. So basically, we're already starting to create that particular pass layer, and you'll see more announcements along those particular lines very soon. So watch this space. Uh, and thank you for your time and attention this morning. Thank you very much, Danny. Thanks, Jonathan. So thank you, everyone, for, uh, for coming this morning and uh, listening to these keynotes. Um, there's going to be continued content in this room. Uh, but at this point, the breakout sessions are going to be getting started in, uh, in the next 20 or 30 minutes and the design summit as well. Come back tomorrow, 9 a.m., same time, same place, for uh, more keynotes, more users. And uh, I hope you all have a great time with OpenStack at the summit here.